Hello, my name is Barry Lacey and I'm the Historian in Residence with Wexford County Council's Library and Archive Services, part of their Decade of Centenaries. And today I'm going to be bringing you a talk entitled The End of the Civil War and the 1923 Election in County Wexford. And we're going to be looking at the end of the Civil War period in the county and the election which took place in August of that year and the candidates that stood for that election and the results. By April 1923, the Irish Civil War had been raging for over nine months. At this stage in the conflict, free state forces had taken the advantage, with many anti-treaty IRA captured and imprisoned. On April the 10th, General, General Liam Lynch, Chief of Staff of the Anti-Treaty Forces, was shot and captured in Tipperary. He was taken to Clonmel Town, where he succumbed to his wounds that same day. On April the 30th, the new Chief of Staff, Frank Aiken, called a ceasefire, followed on May the 24th by an order to dump arms, thus bringing an end to the Irish Civil War. By May 1923, Civil War hostilities in County Wexford had reduced. Possibly the last activity in the county was the sniping of Inniscorty Castle on May the 4th. Just two days prior, on May the 2nd, 29 anti-treaty prisoners escaped from Wexford jail by jumping over the walls. Among them was William Parr, brother of the executed James Parr, and Michael Radford, whose brother Bernie Radford had been killed earlier that year in a fight with Free State Forces. The following month, on June the 21st, he was shot while unarmed when trying to evade capture by Free State Forces at the Comption in South Wexford. The election of 1923 was the first to be held since the establishment of the Irish Free State the previous year. Although the Civil War had passed, there were many Republican candidates, some of whom were imprisoned or on the run at the time. The pro-treaty government contested the election under the party name Cumann and Gael, while Labour and the Farmers' Party also put forward candidates. There were also individuals who had no affiliation to any party, instead placing themselves as independents. In the run-up to Election Day, candidates held public meetings throughout the county to try and persuade voters. While many passed off peacefully, there were disruptive scenes at some. On Sunday the 18th of August, a planned Cumming and Gale meeting, which was due to take place after an anti-treaty meeting, was cancelled due to disruptive scenes. The candidate, Thomas McCarthy, climbed the top of his car to speak, when he was suddenly heckled with eggs and other objects thrown at him as well. Cumming and Gale literature was also taken and burned. It was not until anti-treaty candidates called for order that some normality was restored and McCarthy's car allowed to leave the village. Elsewhere in Ramsgrange, Labour candidate Richard Corish, Mayor of Wexford, had to abandon a meeting due to a hostile mob with his car also started and pushed out of the village. Also in Ramsgrange later that day, the Farmers' Party candidate Michael Jordan decided to cancel his meeting after seeing a large group congregate at the crossroads and hearing about Corish's experience. As he and his companions were leaving the village, though, they were set upon with rotten eggs. They escaped and it was reported a mob were shouting for the Republic and up Lambert, which would suggest an anti-treaty element to this disturbance. Richard Corish was a leading figure in the 1911 Wexford lockout, after which he became subsequently involved in the labour union movement. In 1913 he was elected onto the Wexford Corporation. Although he took no part in the 1916 Rising, he was arrested and imprisoned, being transported to Frongock in Wales. He was elected mayor of Wexford Town in 1920. Although he was involved in the labour movement, he had obvious Republican sympathies. He refused to take the oath of allegiance or recognise the British government or crown once elected and removed the resolution condemning the 1916 rising from the Wexford County Council minute books. During the Irish War of Independence, he received death threats from black and tanned and British officers. In 1921, with Labour deciding not to contest the election, he stood as a Sinn Féin candidate and was elected to the Dáil. He voted for the treaty in January 1922 and won a landslide victory in, in the election. He received a death threat from the anti-treaty IRA during the Civil War but continued in his position. He was re-elected in the 1923 elections on the first count, receiving the highest number of votes. Two other Labour candidates in the 1923 elections in County Wexford were James Shannon and Daniel O'Callaghan. Daniel O'Callaghan was elected as a Labour candidate previously in 1922 and he lived in Court Street in Inniscorty. He was employed as a railway clerk and his father also worked on the railways. He failed to be elected in the 1923 election. From Rathnewell County, Wexford, James Shannon was a founder member of the Inniscorty Rural Council during the period 1920 to 25. 
He came from an agricultural background. From 1920, he was a councillor with Wexford County Council, and during the 1923 election, he stood as a Labour candidate with an address of Rathmuir and his employment listed as a timber filler. He failed, failed to be elected in the 1923 elections. The Clannagale party ran two candidates in the 1923 election in County Wexford. Only one of these was elected, and this was Sir Osmond Esmond. He was from a privileged background from Ballinastraw in County Wexford, and he was a baronet and son of Sir Thomas Henry Grattan Esmond. He was educated at Mount St. Benedict Gorey and later attended Oxford and UCD, but graduated from neither. Following the 1916 rising, he became, became politicised and joined Sinn Féin. In 1918, he campaigned for Sinn Féin's Roger Sweetman, despite the fact that his father was actually a candidate for the Irish Parliamentary Party. During the Irish War of Independence, he would accompany Eamon de Valera to the USA in seeking recognition for an Irish Republic and to help raise the first Dáil loan. In 1922, following the truce, he was appointed as a representative to Spain before returning in 1923 on the same day as the election. At the time of the election, Thomas McCarthy had an address in Inniscorty with his employment recorded as a merchant and secretary. He had worked as a journalist and was involved with the Republican movement, being a member of the Irish Republican Brotherhood. He took part in the 1916 rising in County Wexford, after which he was arrested and imprisoned. In 1914, he was elected to the Inniscorty Urban Council and became its chairman in 1920 under Sinn Féin. During the Irish War of Independence, his house was reportedly raided and his life threatened. After the war, he took a pro-treaty stance and stood as a Clonmagale candidate during the 1923 elections, but failed to be elected. Two Republican candidates ran in County Wexford during the 1923 elections. One of these was Robert Lambert, better known as Bob Lambert, from Kyle in County Wexford, and his employment was listed as, as a farmer during the 1923 elections. He was a keen sportsman and had hurled for County Wexford, winning a Leinster medal in 1918. He had joined the Irish Volunteers in 1918 and was active throughout the Irish War of Independence. During the Civil War, he took the anti-treaty side and was commander of the Kyle Flying Column. He stood as an anti-treaty candidate in 1923 and was elected on the first count, gaining the second highest number of votes. Lambert remained on the run during this time and was not captured until the following year in 1924. James Ryan came from a very Republican family known as the Ryans of Tuncool. While studying for the medical profession in Dublin, he became a co-founder of the Irish Volunteers and joined the Irish Republican Brotherhood. He was involved in the 1916 rising in Dublin and was subsequently arrested and later released. He was elected as a Sinn Féin candidate for South Wexford in the 1918 and 1921 elections, winning the latter unopposed, and was vice chairman of Wexford County Council in 1920. During the Irish War of Independence, he was the brigade commandant for South Wexford. He stood as an anti-treaty candidate in the 1922 elections but lost his seat. He was working in a hospital in Dublin when the Civil War broke out and provided medical aid to anti-treaty forces. He was afterwards interned and still imprisoned during the 1923 elections, but won his seat in County Wexford. The Farmers Party ran two candidates in County Wexford during the 1923 elections, only one of which, Michael Doyle, managed to be elected. Michael Doyle was, from, was a farmer from the old town near to Goat. He was active in politics prior to the 1923 elections, being a member of the Wexford Board of Guardians since 1819, a member of Wexford County Council since 1910, some of which he was chairman, and also serving on other council bodies. He stood as a member of the Farmers' Party and was elected in the 1922 elections. During the Civil War in February 1923, his home was burned by masked men, most likely anti-treaty IRA. He managed to retain his seat in the 1923 elections. The other Farmers' Party candidate, Michael Jordan, came from Bally Hamilton in the north of the county. He had previously run in the 1922 election, but failed to be elected, as also in the 1923 election. He would later be elected, though, in the 1927 general election. Three independent candidates contested the 1923 elections in County Wexford. One of these was Barry Ralph Brereton, who was born and lived in Dublin. He was the son of Ralph Brereton Barry. 
the county court judge for Kildare, Carlow, Wicklow and Wexford. He was educated at Mount St. Bendick near Gorey, and in 1918 he was preparing for a military career at Sandhurst, which he would later shun for an acting career in London instead. Upon his father's death in 1920, he took up study in Trinity College, Dublin. At the time of the election in 1923, he was working as a barrister with a Dublin address. He ran as an independent candidate but failed to be elected for County Wexford in the 1923 elections. Another independent candidate in County Wexford was Hector Hughes. From Dublin and the son of a law clerk, at only 14 years old, he was obliged to take a position as an office boy in a solicitor's office. He would later study in Trinity College and in 1912 was studying for the bar. At this time, he became involved in the labour movement, helping Jim Larkin during the 1930 knockouts. He maintained a continued interest in the labour movement and in 1918 became a founder member of the Irish Socialist Party and later the James Connolly Memorial College. In 1920, he was one of a committee of lawyers appointed by Austin Stack, then Minister for Home Affairs, to draw up rules for the Dáil Courts. At the time of the election, he was working as a barrister with an address in Dublin. He ran as an independent candidate but failed to be elected, receiving the lowest number of votes at only 330. The 1923 election was held on the 27th of August. It was reported that the election passed off without any exciting incidents in County Wexford. Despite this though, some ballot boxes received military escorts on their way to be deposited at the Athenaeum in Escorty. The count began the following day on Tuesday. On the first count, Richard Corish, Michael Doyle and Robert Lambert were deemed elected. Sir Osmond Desmond and Dr James Ryan were elected in the preceding counts. Richard Corish received the most votes, followed by Michael Doyle of the Farmers Party, Robert Lambert Republican, Sir Osmond Esmond of Common Gael, and Dr James Ryan Republican. Nationally, 409,876 pro-treaty votes were cast, compared to 288,794 anti-treaty. Of an electorate of over 1 million, a third voted for non-aligned parties or independents. The Farmers' Party came out as the third biggest party after the election, with 127,000 votes while the Labour Party won 10% of the votes, with a total of 111,000, down 20,000 from its performance in 1922, however. While the election passed off peacefully in County Wexford, several incidents were reported in the local newspapers. In Gorey, some incidents of personation were reported. The ballot box in Gorey was collected in the market square and taken under military escort to an escorty. While passing through Camona village though, it came under fire with several, several shots reportedly fired. No casualties were reported, however. A further incident was reported in Camona village that same night. Newspapers stated that around 10pm on Monday night, the day of the election, two Free State soldiers, Lieutenant Pender of Ferns, was on patrol with Captain Owen Redmond at a place known as Caulfield's Walk, when 10 shots were fired at them. The two soldiers fired back, but the dense overgrowth in the area prevented them from ascertaining how many were involved or from what direction the shots came. One of the bullets struck Pender in the finger, and he was taken to hospital in Dublin for treatment. Both men were assigned to the Gory garrison, and Pender was a member of the old IRA. In the newspapers the following week, an article from a commander of the anti-treaty IRA stated that none of their members were responsible for both incidents in Camolan on the day of the election. May 1923 brought an end to the tragedy that was the Irish Civil War, and in August of that year, both the anti-treaty and the pro-treaty side would face off against each other in the ballot box, with many of the anti-treaty candidates either imprisoned or on the run at the time. In County Wexford, Richard Corish of the Labour Party won the majority of the votes. And meanwhile, two Republican mem Party members, as well as a member of the Farmers Party and the Common Gael Party, were also elected. And for many, the 
election of 1923 was an opportunity to move past the conflicts of the recent years and it was an opportunity to build a new Ireland and indeed many of those elected in 1923 would go on to serve the people of County Wexford for decades to come. 